there's no tournament like a World Cup. This is the best of the best. I remember looking in the mirror in the, the night of the World Cup final and thinking, it's the first time I've ever sort of been genuinely nervous going into a game. The occasion suddenly like dawned on me. Sat in the changing room when you first arrive, the nerves, you're like, why do I do this? Why do I put myself through this? Do I need to? And the moment you step foot onto the field of play, that's when you're in your arena. That's when you're doing the bit you've always trained to do. And that's where you feel comfortable. You just sort of try and put yourself in that place. This is going to be one of probably the, not necessarily physically challenging games, but mentally challenging games because of what's at stake. Yeah, I mean, Australia got off to a good start. What a lot of people don't realise is I had 14 on my back, but I was actually the full back. The kicks come from there. I'm now having to go diagonally into a corner to try and catch a ball running almost backwards. To be fair to them, it was on the money. If you can get somebody coming onto a ball, and they can get that leap. Hats off to them. So for me, the key thing after that was that. The whole world is looking at this competition. Everything you do is scrutinized. Everything you do will not go unseen good or bad, but it's a great opportunity to showcase what you can do, both as an individual and as a team. You've got Ben Cohen on his right and me on his left, and that's what you want. And everybody said, well, why didn't he pass it, you know, to Ben Cohen? I said, well, he wanted to make sure, so he passed it to me on the outside. Half time, says the referee, and England can go in well satisfied with their first half work, three penalties for Johnny Wilkinson and the try from Jason Robinson, 14-5 England lead. It's looking you know, pretty good, the momentum is certainly with us. Uh, if we could have got the Ben K try, that would have been marvellous and um, probably would have reflected the dominance I felt that we had in the first half. We, we felt comfortable going in at half-time. Um, but an extra five to seven points would have would have certainly helped the cause in terms of just trying to you know knock any enthusiasm out of Australia. So I think England must go for the simple one. No, they don't. They don't at all. That's a really bad mistake. Lost it now. Well, they've given away a penalty. The way that the referee refereed the first half, penalties were coming our way, and then something seemed to change around about half time. It's, it went the other way in Australia's favour, and sitting on the side of the pitch, couldn't really see why. Uh, you're seeing these penalties go against England, and you're thinking, actually, that should be our penalty, really. I don't believe for one moment there was any level of complacency, no drop off in terms of what we were trying to do in the second half. Um, but certainly, momentum went against us, penalties went against us, and then you're left in that dying minute of normal time, three points up, and all of a sudden Australia are on the attack. Regan with the feed, big scrum from England. I don't remember the scrum before, but apparently the scrum before went down. But I remember the scrum where he sort of, he called it in quick and I just couldn't get my engagement right. Call against England. 
That is a massive call. So I literally caught the shoulder of um, Al Baxter on the way on the way in, and sometimes you do that and your head slips under and you get the engagement. Sometimes you don't and and you pop out the top and it was a minute and a bit to go on the clock or something and I was like, I've just cost England a World Cup. So I was probably in a quite a dark dark place for a minute or two then and I remember thinking when it went to extra time, I was like, well, I'm not going to stay on after giving away that penalty. I was just thinking I'm off here. That is a huge call as we go into the final minute and now Elton Flatley has the chance to level things up. Elton Flatley feels wonderful. He's got it. You knew it was coming, didn't you? Well, the score at full time, Australia 40, England 40. It never went to a panic. It never felt like, you know, oh wow, how's this happened? This whole game's going against us. There was a certain amount of calmness in, in the team. Uh, even though you had frustration regarding the ref, actually regarding us, it was just a case of, right, just, just calm down. I don't think many of our players were tired. We, we were just very much in a group. You have the regroup and it's just like, no, fine. Don't need to change anything. Don't tactically need to do anything that we've, you know, we've failed to do. Get on and do what we, we know we've done for the last number of years. My overriding thoughts at the time was to reduce our penalty count in the scrums. So I actually sought out Martin Johnson and just said, John, look, we're, the, the next few scrums, we're not going to push. We're not even going to contest them. We'll just let them win their ball and, and we'll win ours in that aspect. It's a World Cup final. Uh, John O <laughs> sort of gave me the look as in, are you sure? Johnny Wilkinson is the man to restart and England have got to do it all again. We came out positively at the start. We got, got a penalty, which I don't know, was probably somewhere around the halfway line. And that was the killer blow, I think, for Australia. Well, would that the referee had seen that at the previous line out at the end of the match. Again, he's got the distance. It's brilliant! And just the starting one needed. Just knowing that Johnny could step up and kick him from that sort of range, he struck it beautifully, it went over. And you looked at the Australian players and you just saw a few shoulders duck down again. Oh my Lord, how's that happened again? Look, we've done so much work to be the fittest team out there. And that was our mantra really, is to be the fittest team in world rugby. And how do you sort of gauge that is very difficult. You know, it's being the best team at the end of the game. If you're making all the right decisions and, and you can keep the pressure on the opposition at the end of the game, you've probably got clarity of thought and, and that all comes from being one of the fittest teams out there. 17 points to 14. Neil back. Wilkinson. On the back of the, I think it was about 93rd minute, we've got about 25 metre blindside, and that's where I'm, I'm defending. Going through the normal rituals that I had with Lawrence, making sure we understood each other's roles. You've got me inside, the scrum goes up, you take me outside. Something that we'd probably done since New Zealand 1997, when it was the first time we defended in that little unit, and. Zinzan Brook had walked in for a try and it's one of those things we'll never let that happen again and six years later you're still making sure the communication's right. Australia pick up, come down the blind side, George Gregan, he looks to go on the outside and we managed to just block him out, go into touch. That was the first of the hamstring cramp. It's like, yeah, all did. I'm just so happy to have been able to play in the final to be honest. 
Two weeks before that, I didn't even think I was still going to be at the World Cup. The first game against Georgia, um, you know, it was very clear that almost like a no no risk strategy. If someone feels something, you know, just let the medics know, um, and we'll make the appropriate course of action. Whether that's you stay or you come off. About an hour into the Georgia game, I, I thought I, it might be a little bit of cramp, um, but it just felt a little bit odd. Something I hadn't really experienced before. We agreed I'd go for a scan that did show that there was a little tear um, but it, it shouldn't keep you out too, too long but again start of a tournament let's not risk this. Somewhere over the next week or two uh, I got to about 95% on some running in a park in Melbourne and then all of a sudden the pain came back again and we, it got re-scanned and it showed that somewhere along the line I must have torn it again or put a bit more damage on it. Um, so let's keep on working at it. So I spent an incredible amount of time with the physios they were, and the doctor um, and masseur. Yeah, they were all brilliant with me, uh, all kept my spirits up kept telling me that I was going to be right. More importantly, Clive was telling me that he was prepared to wait. Um, and the medics were 100% you will be getting back. So I kept going with it. Um, you know, trying to do everything I could. But, uh, Richard Hill is now out of the game. On comes Lewis Moody. Preparing to play is easy. Preparing to be on the bench is brutal. Not only, you, you know, you don't know when you're going to come on, so it could be the first minute, it could be the 90th minute. You also, if you're in the back row, I'm covering three different positions, which means three different line-out options, you know, of which there could be 30 different calls in each position. I was a competitive individual who believed I could make a difference to the team if I was on the pitch. When the game is so close as it was, and Elton and Johnny were kicking all those goals, you know, your mind sort of switches, or it, it wants to play games with you, you know, it's such a powerful implement. And um, I remember it suddenly getting hold of me and going, you know, actually, do you want to be the person that comes on, you know, and gives away a penalty? You know, that's the sort of thing your inner being's trying to, it's the directions it's trying to pull you in. And then you spend the next sort of 15, 20, however long, but we went to extra time, so a long time, fighting those gremlins. Yeah, you know, you've got to hope that uh, young Lewis Moody doesn't have too hot a head. Coming up with the ball. There was a lot less stress than I think anyone ever imagines at that point, you know, because you're in the game, you're focused on what you're doing. It's about winning the little battles and 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 doing the next job. And you know, that penalty was given away by Lawrence, I think. Oh, and England get the deflection. Neil back. Oh, and a penalty. In from the side, up go the roars again. A poor line out from England, that was the cause. Lawrence apologising to nearly everybody. It, just because of the, na the nature of it, I, I, again, it was one of these, it's like, don't worry, Lo, we'll just we'll get on and deal with it, sort of thing like that. But L Lawrence was gutted that he'd actually done it. Was we worried about that? No, I, I don't think so. You are hoping, miss it, miss it, come on, miss it, and all this. But the way he'd been kicking that day, you, 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 you were more or less going, right, just again, there is a little bit of a reset. Let's go back. We're back to a kickoff now and start again. Even as he was lining it up, you're thinking there's, there's, there's not much hope of him missing this. And it's as true blue as it possibly could be. For us, it was all about process. All the preparation, everything else, was just part of the bigger picture. But we, we had to get to a place whereby we weren't, it wasn't always prescriptive. We had so many things in our mind. We'd gone through so many plays. We knew them inside out. Because our prep was so good, it was just, uh, just an inbuilt computer. Probably the best thing that ever happened to us in terms of winning the World Cup was losing Grand Slams. Uh, we lost to Wales. In 1999, we lost to Scotland in 2000, we lost to Ireland in 2001. The points differentials were within our control. Um, and, you know, Clive definitely you know, made sure that we were aware that 
another string to our bow would be the drop goal routine. When we knew we were good enough to win, in the months leading up to the final, we rehearsed at the end of training, we rehearsed possible outcomes of finals. We'd, we'd worked on so many things over two years, really. The, the, the kick was sent down to Rogers, so that was thought through. Jono's clarity in the moment under the post, so, you know, I loved his leadership because it was just like, that's no worries, next job, kick off, Mudos, you chase, pressure Rogers, he'll scuff, you know, he'll hopefully kick it, scuff it, and, and we'll get the ball back in their half. So, and, and that's exactly what happened. Rogers, England have the line out. The surprise was that Benny called it to the back. I have to admit, that was a surprise. It, you know, when you look on reflection, when you look at the course of the game, they threw no balls. They, no one competed at the back. It was a wet, greasy evening. Tom had only been a hooker for two years. And I do remember Benny Kay and, and Jono saying, it's, it's fine, just you throw it. I think even to the point Jono saying, look, if it, if it all goes pear-shaped, blame me. <laughs> we wanted a quick ball off the back so we could play with our backs in the midfield. We practiced that sort of move every training session for about two years. So all of a sudden, Matt Dawson has gone to the breakdown with 90 seconds left in the game. He's put the dummy, gone straight up the middle. Now, for me, and my view is, Dawson's gone, I need to get with him. And Dawson suddenly gets away! Remember going in, we secure the ball, and then Everything that happened around that, we all went in, it was pre-programmed. We got ourselves into this position, DG routine. The opposition posts are here. We, we want to be zigzagging really somewhere. So when our kicker gets the ball, he's in front of the post and so there'll be a drop goal there. Jono just wanted the ball. He didn't want to make any ground really. He just wanted to buy time to allow Matt Dawson to get up. I was in no man's land because I'd just been into a rock. I knew what was coming but I almost wanted to see what was coming. Instead of just being at the breakdown and making sure nobody could run past, I wasn't in and I was turned around to Johnny and I was like, I didn't want to get in the way, but I was actually doing nothing at that point. <laughs> I wasn't blocking, I was just looking at Johnny. Johnny Wilkinson, he's got it! It's over! At last of the fourth attempt, Johnny Wilkinson is on target! I didn't see it, I heard it. It's like, it's like when you hear a, 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 a proper golfer hit a good golf shot, it was... As soon as you heard Johnny kick it, you just went straight, oh, that, that's it. You're then going through the raw emotion of ecstatic around that's just gone over, but then you're looking at the clock going, there's still time to kick off. All of a sudden, it was a case of, it's not finished yet, right, everybody get back. And we all scrambled back, and for the first time in that game, we weren't in the right positions. I remember Trevor Woodman being out of position in front of me and thinking, why are you there? And, and the kickoff, so they, they pinged it down the middle, which is where I would have been, or where I was, uh, but for some reason, Trevor was there as well. Yeah, Clive still loses his rag over that restart, really, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things is sometimes you've got to think outside the box. They must just make sure they don't give away a penalty. Clear to touch. You don't care where it goes. Touch put it in. England have won the 2003 World Cup. Remember hugging um, Lawrence Delalio, jumping on the back of Will Greenwood and Johnny, and, and like everybody is going absolute nuts, and it and it starts to to sink in that we we've won. I would say there's as much relief as there is any other emotion. We went in as favourites, 
Um, I don't believe that the favourites tag ever got on top of us. Each game we knew that we had to perform. Uh, nearly came unstuck against Wales. Uh, and you just look at these moments and just go, oh, we've, we've, we've been able to live up to the tag. Um, we've stuck in a game that potentially was going against us at one point, uh, but we've never stopped believing and we've never stopped performing and we've, we've run ourselves into the ground and we've won it. The most euphoric and most honest moment in, in, in my sporting career where you feel just an utter relief and a realisation of how much stress and pressure you'd been under for you know, six months basically. It just felt like the weight of the world lifted off everyone's shoulders. Everything about it was collective in that aspect. Every, everyone was, are you happy? You're, you've been part of it, but you're happy looking around because the, the one thing about that, that squad of players that we'd, we'd done over the years, we'd, we'd experienced some fantastic highs, some horrible lows. Um, some of the players had lost, lost loved ones in that period together. And, and, and we was all there for each other. So it was, it was a tight group in that aspect. So to, to, to actually achieve something like that together, and as I said, with your mates, with your friends, um, is very special indeed. You know, we set out to, to win it um, and we achieved it, but more relief in that, um, that I made it that I actually, that, that my goal four years previous was to get to that, get to that squad and be part of that World Cup and I suppose more than anything it was, it was relief that, that I achieved my goal. What I really um, loved to seeing John sort of walk up onto that little podium and, and lift the World Cup on his own because we all knew it was he was never going to play for England again. You know, to see him go up there and, and lift the World Cup and in his last game was probably something very special. I'm probably getting quite emotional about it now, really, because you know he was such an iconic leader and, and player, and to see him do that, you just think, well, fair play to you. I thought I'd quietly slip away. There were plastic chairs, so I took one into the shower with a beer, turned on the shower, had a, had a drink, thought it was an opportune moment to wash my kit. Otherwise, it would have been three days of stinking in my kit bag. But yeah, I just needed a bit of time and reflection to myself quickly. Because um, it had been a worrying time. I did think it was over, so. 93 minutes, yeah, I was happy. I remember sitting in the changing rooms afterwards thinking, what the hell do you do now? Like, generally sitting there with Cosa and Jono, and I just remember feeling a little bit numb, like 24, I think it was 24 at the time. 
It's like, what do you do now type thing? It was really weird. Amazing to be in the change room and everything, all that weight to be gone. And I suppose in hindsight, what you learn is that the journey is what you really enjoy. You know, the graph, the effort, the euphoric moments are the, you know, are the result of all that effort that we put in and, and it couldn't have been more true for me. Best feeling of all was doing it with a, with a group of people that had put so much into it that was never going to let you down until the day we die. We can look at each other and think, yeah, we achieved the ultimate goal. The first Northern Hemisphere team to win the Rugby World Cup final and we did it in style.